In this video, I'll explore research into neonatal mortality rates during the period when Lucy Letby worked at the Countess of Chester Hospital. The findings are real and statistically significant, but they highlight how statistics can be misused through the Texas sharpshooter fallacy, leading to harmful conclusions. This video illustrates the dangers of drawing hypotheses from results rather than forming hypotheses upfront then testing them robustly using the scientific method. The Texas sharpshooter fallacy is a bias where people find patterns in random data and falsely attribute causation. In this context, someone shoots hundreds of bullets at a barn, then draws a target around a cluster of holes to claim sharpshooter accuracy. It shows how easy it is to misinterpret random patterns as meaningful correlations. This is of course relevant to the Lucy Letby case, as many statisticians have claimed, this is an example of the fallacy in action, with only circumstantial evidence of malicious acts backing up the stats. Now, it's worth being clear from the beginning of this video. It will look at how bad statistics can lead to findings that, when combined with cherry-picked circumstantial evidence, can come to seem like certain facts, but that are in fact ludicrous. Presenting this necessitates an irreverent style to this video, which in no way is meant to disrespect or make fun of the tragic deaths of neonatal babies. The purpose of this video is to draw an allegory to how the Texas sharpshooter fallacy has led to the truth behind the cluster of deaths of the Countess of Chester Hospital being ignored, and hence the opportunity to improve neonatal care and save babies' lives in future to be missed. That is the real outcome of this case and I will not hesitate to use any approach I can to draw attention to this issue and seek to improve outcomes for those most vulnerable members of our society. If it also leads to an innocent nurse being freed from prison, then so much the better. So as noted, this video is based on real research into real data. Alongside my considered, hopefully insightful work, I wanted to find an example of a bad finding that I could use to illustrate the Texas sharpshooter fallacy and this one was literally the first ridiculous option that I explored. My key source of information is the MBR Race UK reports, which have individual hospital level data for each of the 2014 to 2017 calendar years. These reports are an excellent source of information for exploring the Letby case, so I've been studying them extensively. As usual, I put all my sources in the notes of this video so you can recreate my results should you wish to. Here's an extract from the 2015 report to give you a feel for the level of information available. For each hospital, we get the total number of births, their both crude and stabilised mortality from stillbirths, and for neonatals in the care of that hospital. Crude mortality rates are entirely factual. You simply divide deaths by births to get them. The stabilised mortality rates seek to allow for the more easily available risk factors relating to each birth to give a more comparable figure across hospitals. At the bottom of the page, we have the Countess of Chester Hospital, and we can see the 2.96 crude mortality rate, which was noticed by staff at the hospital and began the series of events which ultimately led to Lucy Letby receiving 15 life sentences in 2023. Every mortality stat I've seen quoted around this case has always been from the crude data only, with no attempt to adjust for risk. So let's use the crude data to see what bad statistics we can come up with. Let's think of one way we could cut this data up to understand it better. Let's try looking at the first letter of each hospital name, ignoring any thus. So we have Airedale as an A, then various Bs and a few Cs on this page. Ridiculous, I know. But let's follow this logic through to see what conclusions we can find. Notice that some of the hospitals have stars under the crude mortality, where that hospital, for whatever reason, hasn't reported a crude mortality rate. So we'll remove these from our analysis. Let's add up all the births and deaths based on crude mortality for each hospital over 2014 to 2017. We get this table here, where I've excluded a few starting letters which have very few births associated with them. Now we have births and neonatal deaths and then a neonatal mortality rate expressed as a rate per 1000 births for each letter. We can see that all the mortality rate numbers start over one or a two, so things are fairly unexciting at face value. But let's look at the same data graphically. Ah, so a bit of random noise in the rates by letter. They're all pretty much similar, bar the R's. 
where crude mortality seems to be exceptionally low. Have we found something interesting here? Let's do some math. This table here compares the mortality rate for all hospitals combined, then all combined bar the R's, and then the R's in isolation. We can see we have a 1.9 per 1,000 births mortality rate for all hospitals, but just a 1.25 per 1,000 rate for R's. That's a 36% lower mortality rate, which is huge. And if we test the R's on the hypothesis that they have the same mortality rate as all the other hospitals, we get a very strong fail on the chi-squared test. We're looking for more than 5% here, and we get 0%. So clearly a statistically significant result. Hospitals with the first letter R are just way better than the others. If we could get all the hospitals down to this same mortality rate, there would be hundreds of neonatal lives saved each year going forward. Let's look into these super hospitals. Is there any common factor which links them together? We've got the Royal Berkshire, the Royal Cornwall, the Royal Devon. Hmm, this is uncanny. We've got the Royal Free, the Royal Surrey, the Royal United. Whoa, they are all royal. What's the chance of six hospitals all having the same first word? Well, according to ChatGPT, there are about 25,000 words in the English language starting with the letter R. So the chance of randomly picking royal six times in a row is 25,000 to the power of six, or 1 in 244 trillion trillion. This is a complete slam dunk. This is even more unlikely than one nurse out of 38 on a rotor appearing 25 times in a row. We need to get this message out there. We need to get all hospitals aligned to this amazing result. What do we do now? How do we make it stick? Now, obviously, we won't be able to find any actual evidence, so let's go for the next best thing. Let's get a load of circumstantial evidence. I'm sure we can find some royalist doctors. These guys are loaded financially. who will be willing to say it's the love of their queen, as was, that inspired them to care for these babies impeccably. We'll get some anecdotes about finding a nurse at a non-R hospital, looking uncaringly as a union flag fell to the floor and doing absolutely nothing as people trampled on it, and how a doctor had to intervene, dust it down and put it back on the wall. We'll get another anecdote about a nurse at a bad hospital, sounding all excited and gossipy when the Queen died. We'll hope no one notices that this event took place well outside of our data period. And then we'll link all these anecdotes suspiciously back to days when things didn't go so well to prove our point. Then, will demand that all hospitals rebrand to put Royal at the start of their name. And we can then watch as the number of neonatal deaths plunge and we get to be the heroes who save the UK. The nurses won't back us up here, of course. They're bound to ask for less than 12 hour shifts, working equipment, functional transport teams, more doctors on the ward, less sewage in the neonatal care unit, fewer bacterial outbreaks, but come on, this is 2024 in the NHS, so who's going to care what the nurses think? And if anyone challenges us on our faulty conclusions, which are initiated and driven by faulty statistics, we'll just point at the wealth of circumstantial evidence we've collected and say the stats have nothing to do with our case. We don't need to point to any actual evidence of how standing for the national anthem improves outcomes or Clapping and waving union flags at nurses leads them to patriotically put in their best shifts ever. Now, as I said at the outset, neonatal deaths are no laughing matter. We can all see that this would waste time, money and effort and result in a right royal mess with no saving of innocent babies' lives at all. But somehow the Lucy Letby case seems, to my mind at least, to have been built on the Texas sharpshooter fallacy, leading to what may actually be an innocent nurse having their life ruined and no investigation into what really happened, which might lead to improvements in neonatal care in future. It could also, in my opinion, be putting off nurses joining the NHS just when it most desperately needs to attract more staff to deliver safe outcomes. Now, obviously it's worth being very clear that this video takes a sexist, sharpshooter fallacy to its extremes to make its point, and that I am in no way making an allegation that anyone connected with the Lucy Letby case took such ridiculous steps. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments. This has been a Justice by Numbers production. 
This is a new channel, so please like, subscribe, comment, recommend, and share to help support this channel and allow me to produce more videos to help us all get to the truth of Lucy Letby's case. Thank you. Bye.